Just mic'd up with Mikey Matuk. Got the boys in. I got Lloyd. We got J Mitch. We got Jackie Boy. He tried to jump up, and he might have knocked it in. Good timing. Let's go. What a start to the Monday. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Lafayette. My boys will come in. Say, oh, God. So I'm, me and Joel, bro, I got Joel in the headlock. And he's sitting there, <laughs> he's punching me in the stomach, like, hey, punch me, punch me, punch me. Here, if there's everyone sitting around, who here thinks Ochico can practice today after having five full beers? And he goes, Chad Jones, right? Chad Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Six for, minutes. For seven minutes, right? Chad's like, no, nah, man, I, I don't think Ochico can practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you there. You're more fucked up than me. Being on the spirit plane had some issues, I think. She was sleep, sleep farting. You heard her or you just thought it was her? I, I sat right next to her. So. Whoa. What was that? Time for the show. show. <laughs> 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 oh, no, You go to spring training. Are you gonna bring your chinchilla and your turtle? <laughs> My dad tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> the SEC is God. They hate fat people. <laughs> I mean, I get crushed for that. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Hey, it's, it's just the south, bro. You got a bunch of food down here. Like they, they just they're 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 <laughs> players. Look at. Lloyd. <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? <laughs> You're looking for a recruiting coordinator, Coach. I'm here. <laughs> He's like, I'll piss my pants right now. <laughs> no way. He's wearing gray pants, long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now. Hello, wow, red looks popping. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Not my Welcome new color. back to Mike Up, maybe. Uh, today is Tuesday. That Alabama almost March got March 28th. Is that today? today? 26th. 26th. Not the 28th yet. March 26th. Uh, we have a great show for you today. I apologize for having a last minute announcement and also um, having a show on a Tuesday. But there's a baseball game tonight, so we can preview to it. I have... Something happening on Wednesday night that I thought we were going to be able to do a show earlier Wednesday and then post it later, which did not happen because of, um, you know, I have things I have to be at uh, in Lafayette on Wednesday. So Just tell everyone what it is, we, man. Uh, I'm getting my high school there we football, go. Hey, my high school baseball hey, jersey. There we go. Retired. Pat yourself on the back. Um, at St. Thomas More in Lafayette, which is very, <laughs> uh, very excited for. Uh, built, built a lot of memories there. You know, that was kind of where I first really started progressing my baseball game. Thank you. Thank we'll start you. the claps early. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. Um, so instead of skipping a show, we wanted to have a show because I know there's been a lot of conversations about the baseball team. Uh, I went to lunch today at a nice establishment in Baton Rouge uh, called Geno's. Gold and Club. That was a, that was a conversation. Gold Club is no longer there. Oh. It's the penthouse next door to Geno's. <laughs> Good Catholic uh, boy over here. here. And the conversation... <laughs> around some of these tables walking in was, you know, about baseball. What's going on with the team? What's happening here? What's happening there? Uh, we talked about it yesterday. The team's fine. It's going to take some time. It's work in progress. They're still ranked in the top 10 in all of the major polls. 
so people still believe in them. They are two and four in conference. They have a right. Uh, they have the ability to right the ship. It's still very early in the season. You have 26 or no 24 conference games left. Um, so you have the ability to turn the to turn the ship around and figure it out. And I really think they're going to do that starting tonight. They are playing against Southeastern, who, if you remember, earlier in the year LSU went to Southeastern, was down three to one in the ninth, scored three runs in the top of the ninth to win the game four to three. A uh, big part of that rally was Paxton Cleans two-run double in the ninth, right? Gave them the lead. They ended up winning the game. Um, tonight they are now playing at home against Southeastern. Southeastern is a improved team from last year. They're 17 and seven right now. Uh, they're a team that did not make their conference tournament last year. They fired their entire staff, hired a whole new staff, and so that this new staff is bringing energy. One of our, me and Jared's friends, I grew up with a guy named Taylor Duga who played at Alabama from Lafayette, all-time hits leader at Alabama. Um, he is uh, one of the assistant coaches at Southeastern. Barbier, who was the head coach at Northwestern State, which you probably have been around him. Yes, uh, both he of is, those cats. Both of them, right? You know him too, yeah. Forgot Taylor's at Northwestern State too as a coach. Now he is now the head coach here. He brought Taylor there. Um, they are bringing in a lot of new energy to that team, and you can see the improvements that they are having. Obviously, they still got a long ways to go, but they're 17 and seven. That is a way better than they were last year, and putting themselves in a really good position. They're going to come to LSU tonight and try to ruin their day. Right? Try to LSU's, do what they tried to do. Try to complete what they almost did exactly a couple weeks ago. Exactly. LSU's on two-game losing streak, lost Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Southeastern is going to come out today and really try to. Uh, step on their throat and win a th uh, make LSU lose a third straight game. Um, starting pitcher obviously has not been announced. I imagine it's going to be Johnny Holstaff. It's a new guy that we just picked up in the portal. He likes to. Um, he only throws about an inning. Yeah. yeah, he only throws about an inning, and he changes his name every inning. Yeah, he does. Different um, love, yeah, different. That's different what love. I imagine is going to happen. Johnny Holstaff will get the start. Trips the portal's out of control. Yeah, uh, it's a crazy. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. You this get guy's nine. Highly touted, right? Here. <laughs> I mean, yeah. someone called not maybe nine pitchers in one. You know what I mean? Um, maybe 10. Maybe, maybe 10 pitches. Maybe, maybe you get a couple in inning. I don't know. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Johnny Holstaff is, that means the whole bullpen is available today. I'd imagine he's not going to stretch out a ton of guys in the bullpen because uh, LSU plays at Arkansas starting on Thursday. So if you didn't know, it's a pretty big series. For pretty big series. I, I'm curious. So they're playing Tuesday. Well, I guess they're just going to leave Wednesday morning. We're gonna leave tomorrow morning. Yeah, hop on the bird. That's it. Hop on the hop on the PJ. We always took the PJ to Arkansas. Okay, yeah. so we are it, the only places we didn't take the PJ to are Alabama, Mississippi. He, they take them there now, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Fly Pelican. Um, but they go to they go to Arkansas on Thursday, so they, this is a good little tune-up game for them. Um, I do not know who the actual name of the starter is gonna be, but like we said, it's gonna be a bunch of guys throwing. Jay said, who did he say in the press conference yesterday, Lloyd, that was, that was definitely going to throw today? Let me look it Cam up. Cam Johnson. Um, Moffitt. Ma Aiden Moffitt. Buckham. Buckham. Look at she has good memory. There's only three. You only mentioned three? Yeah, it's Aiden Moffitt, Cam Johnson, Michael Buckham. Will pitch. Will pitch in today. some form or fashion today. How long is that? I don't know. Um, but I would imagine, look, Lloyd didn't throw over the weekend. He may throw an inning to get some work. Uh, Bronzini may throw to get some work. Whoever's available that did not throw Saturday or Sunday will probably be available for an inning or two tonight. Now, the guys who he wants to be available on Friday, I mean on Thursday, will not be available because he doesn't want to pitch them on two days rest at this point in the right. season. You're about to say something. I was going to say, Fidel also didn't throw over the weekend. Fidel Uyoa? You I think you've seen him one time in SEC play, so you probably want to see – I don't know if it would be today or if you want to see him over the weekend. That's another name to remember. And then I don't think uh, Will Herring. I mean, Will. Griffin Herring Griffin, on Friday. No, not Griffin. The, uh, the other, He got hot. Helmers. Helmers. Will Helmers. Helmers. He threw. Did he throw? He threw on yeah. Saturday. So I imagine he's probably available to throw an inning maybe or so today. He didn't well, throw he a ton. A, uh, he's an interesting one. Yeah. Because, I mean, I could easily, like, he didn't throw over the weekend. So, yeah, I could see him throwing in this game. But you got to imagine that's him. a weekend arm you want, and if you could possibly get him twice this weekend, that might help you out more than right. him throwing tonight. So it would be – look for that one. I don't know if you'll actually see him tonight. I'd be, I'd be kind of shocked if you did. We'll see. Yeah, I, I'm not – I don't really know what they're going to – what their plan is for him, but I do know that they're going to throw a bunch of guys, and these guys – it's a good game to get work in, right? It's a team that's going to be competitive. 
They're going to be feisty. They're going to have good at-bats because they're going to want to beat you. So it's a good – I don't want to call it a tune-up game, but it's a good game to go out there and kind of figure out some of the stuff maybe you hadn't been doing very well and perform at a high level at home before you go on the road to a hostile environment to a really against a really good team. Hey, they, they played there at Southeastern recently. Southeastern had them on the ropes literally all the way up to, what, the top of the ninth, correct? So let let – without – don't mistake this for what this is. That team feels like they can beat you. They're going to come in here and try to beat you again when you're already on a two-game losing streak. It should be a good test for LSU to kind of, if they want to, right the ship, if you will, and kind of get this thing going in the right direction. Um, no doubt, right? And well, Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I wonder how much, because if LSU had won the Florida series, that was one game away, nice. Um they were obviously very close to winning the series at Florida, then there wouldn't be an undue amount of pressure on the Southeastern game. I wonder how that kind of plays into a factor. Because people are going to have the magnifying glass out. For sure. They're going to they're gonna nitpick everything this tonight, right? Yeah. They're going to make sure, oh, uh, they played terrible. They didn't do this well over the weekend. They're still not doing it well against a team that's not as good as Florida. I understand all that, and I understand the panic, and I understand the sense of urgency that, that some of the fans are going to have. But just understand, they, this game is – it's a real game, and it counts, and it matters, and Jay wants to win it. Players want to win it. They need to win it because it's it's good going into the weekend. But they're also not going to win it at all at all costs, right? So they're going to make sure they put the guys in who need to get the work in. The guys, hopefully, that they do play. I mean, they're all talented enough to win this game. And so these guys are going to go out there, and they're going to play well, and they're going to go ahead, and they're going to win the game, right? Now – we talk about the pitching staff. I think I don't think that's really the big question. I think the big question is, hey, who, is he gonna? What lineup is he gonna put out there? Is he gonna throw somebody out there? Maybe like an Ashton Larson. Is he gonna get another start? I think you told me he had three starts so far this year. Is he gonna get his fourth start? We said, oh, maybe so. And then I was like, well, maybe this seems like a game that you want Paxton to start because it's a game that you want to get him more reps. You want to get him more time at the plate. You want to get him more. Uh, adjusted to what he maybe what he's trying to fix in his swing against an opponent that can beat you, and he feels but, good against. But that's not as good as Florida, not as good as Arkansas, and that you just had a big moment against earlier in the year. So um, I would imagine that he gets a start because of those reasons, because they need him to get going, like we talked about yesterday. Yeah, I don't. I don't know where the conversation and or maybe the body language or whatever cues you could have gotten from Paxton inside that clubhouse was after the game and or yesterday. But I would imagine if you want him to get going, there probably needs to be a fire that's lit and there probably also still needs to be opportunity. So whether that's knowing that you'll play him this weekend, but you're sitting him today, whether that's saying, hey, we'll put Larson in the lineup along with him and maybe he can read the writing on the wall Whatever it is, I think there needs to be Jay. I think Jay has to figure out a way to kind of really spark this thing and see either one or the other is going to work out or both is going to work out. And I'm going to have to find a way to be able to get this team to, to start going in the right direction with the lineup because that guy either has to be a vital part of what they do or somebody else is going to have to replace that production. And that's just what it is. Yep, yep. And, you know, I don't know – would Jay's thought processes on that? Right. I would imagine it's pretty similar to what we're thinking. Like, hey, listen, yeah, I want – but here's the deal. He's looking at Paxton. Yeah, he wants Paxton to get going. But if he thinks Larson can do it, I need to get Larson more at-bats too. Right? right? Maybe they bo they're both in there today. You know, I, I don't know if that's the case, but maybe so. Um, if everything goes the way that you'd want it to, I'd imagine you get Larson in there at some point. But I think the real question is, do you get him ready for if you if he's not the if Kling isn't the starter? I would imagine that means that you're getting Larson ready for his first action, not to be Thursday night against Hagen Smith versus Arkansas at Arkansas. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean that wouldn't be his first action though. No, well, first tonight SEC, uh, well, it's going to be. Saying, you don't want that to be his first start. Like, all right, this is kind of well, what it's going to feel like a little bit when you right, the lineup. Right, but and this is what it looks like. But this is his fourth start. Yeah. You know, so, like, no matter what, you can't simulate the first SEC start. Like, you're going to have to go through that at some point. Um, you know, if Jay thinks he's ready for it, uh, I don't think Jay's going to have a problem throwing him out. I don't think Jay's, Jay's proven that he's not – if he feel, it feels like you can handle it, he's going to throw you out in that situation. Um, 
As far as the catching situation goes, Malazzo will probably catch this game if they're going to try to play well. Well, they need to get Brady Neal going. Well, Brady Neal may catch because I don't think Brady Neal is going to play on on Thursday against the lefty. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just guessing. I mean, it's a lefty throwing just under 100. Like, I don't know if he's going to have Brady starting that game. Maybe he wants Malazzo starting it. Maybe he wants Stravinsky starting it with Holman on the mound. Um, so Brady Neal will probably get to start a catcher. I think the infield is going to stay the same. I'll say the last little bit, too. Fry? <clears throat> he may give Travinsky a day off. No, he ain't going to give him a day off. No. I'll say the last little bit, too, to look for on Larson, just to think about this. Tonight, if he's in the lineup tonight, I would imagine that also means he's going to play this weekend. Don't be surprised if he doesn't play Friday night, though. He is, a left, he is a lefty – or Thursday night. Yeah. He is a lefty hitter. Hagen Smith is going to be throwing right. on Thursday night. Right. Don't be surprised if he's not playing on Thursday night. Yeah. So if you do see him in there and he's not playing on Thursday – Take that into take that into yeah. account too. No doubt, no doubt. Um, and you saw LSU do something that I thought was interesting when they got a ton of right-handed bats in the lineup, and I think that was with Travinsky at catcher, which you hadn't really seen him do that during the weekend in that kind of a, I would say an SEC series, and he was behind behind the dish for Holman last week, and it was to get an extra bat in there, whether it be insert name, but that was the way that he was able kind of to finagle the defensive like the designated hitter spot. By keeping and you may in the and you may see that again, right? Because he may with the lefty, you may he may want Fry in there as a DH, right? So you may like that's what they did on on Friday against Florida. Travinsky started because there was a lefty on the mound. Fry was the DH, I believe. Yeah, and so I, I wouldn't be shocked if you saw that again um, on Thursday. Uh, but you know, before we move on to the really the preview of Thursday, t- tonight's game, I believe LSU's going to come out like they did last. Tuesday, and they're going to score runs early, and they're going to do what they need to do to put themselves in a position to win the game, hopefully 10-run rule the team if they agree to it, which I imagine they did, um, and not have a ton of innings being pitched by the bullpen and get out of there. They're not stressing that they didn't have 10-run rule them, but I believe that coming off the weekend like they did against Mississippi State, I mean, the next game they were up 7-1 in the first two innings. So I think you're going to see something along those lines. And I'm interested to see if it is Paxton in, in center for tonight. If he's able to get it rolling, it would be a no-doubter he starts Thursday, correct? I think it's a no-doubter right now he's starting Thursday anyway. Yeah. Because he's a righty and it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a hard I think it's, I think it's – knowing how much Jay likes matchups and stuff, and, mm-hmm. and I don't know the splits of all these guys, but I just can't imagine you want – a lineup full of lefties and or young lefties. I was about to say young lefties too. Hagen Smith. So I would yeah. imagine Paxton's going to play Thursday night, whether he's playing tonight or not. But tonight and Thursday could be a huge determiner on kind of how it goes forward for him. Yeah, I mean, the only replacements you have of Paxton in center field are two freshman lefties, lefty hitters. So I don't think that you're gonna, he's going to put them in that situation. Um, so I think he'll start on Thursday. For sure. I think LSU takes care of business tonight, obviously. Um, they're going to get off to a good start. I just want to see them get off to a good start. I want to see them play crisp baseball, air-free baseball, sharp baseball, no letdowns from the Sunday weekend series, and do what you need to do and move on. That's what I want to see. And they had a mandatory NCAA day off yesterday. Jay was not – he said it very flippantly. He's like, we can't practice tomorrow. Because oh, yeah, because you know, you know, have a day off the rest to. of the week. So they're practicing today before the game and then going into the game after practice. Honestly, they'll probably score 15 runs in two innings doing that. It's an interesting one. i never it heard is. that one before. It, well, it, is. Just, it just shows kind of where, if you don't, I wouldn't imagine that LSU is taking this one lightly, but I imagine that practice is not going to be very easy. Jay doesn't, Jay doesn't seem to me like the type of dude that – has not done a good job of communicating with the team. So I, I I can't imagine him calling that practice or whatever you want to call it, what they're going to do today before the game, and guys being so thrown off of, man, I can't believe he's taking it here. I would imagine they've gotten that feel and that tone from him already, and they're kind of expecting it, so you go and kind of do it. So I guess it's very unorthodox, but I feel like – they kind of knew probably this was coming just off of how he's been 
probably communicating. Communicating. With them. Yeah, I'm sure they found out. Yeah. yeah. Sunday, as soon as they walked in, like a ten run. Yeah. He's just been sitting there stewing, watching the game on the on the mini screen. And he's like, we're definitely practicing too. Oh, yeah. yeah he's he, he, doesn't, the... he doesn't seem like Sunday game's over. I don't say anything. You get Monday off, and all of a sudden I tell you, <laughs> I know you think you had a game today, but you're coming in for practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem like he's no. that type of dude. So. He, had the, he had the practice plan drawn up before the game was over on Sunday. 1,000%. Yeah, it wasn't going to be That's what he up. was doing when he wasn't coaching <laughs> from innings no, five no. to eight right there. You walk in, you walk in, you have the practice plan on the, on the, <laughs> t- on the TV already. Like, hey. Wait a minute. That says we have practice. Is on. that date right, Coach? Are you sure this is? Cr- yeah. Yeah, you'd be yeah. the one to ask. Yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> we have practice on Tuesday. Game on Tuesday. We have a game on Tuesday. That's weird. Hey, Coach, you made no, I didn't. No, nah, that's right. Nope, y'all here. I already called your teachers. And tell good. every and tell everyone don't come in my office and ask either. You might as well pass that around. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Doors closed. No open door policy today. <laughs> Show up. Oh, dude, you would have to look at the board and be like, I don't care. I'm not talking about it. I'm yeah, we just got looking some at it work. like, we're showing up. Yeah, we got, some work. Says, we got some doing. work. We got some work to do today. Yeah, because I'd yeah. imagine the team feels the same way. Like, I know you probably want – I mean, I know it's unorthodox, but they have to feel the same way that he feels where you're like, all right. I mean, they did practice on Monday. Didn't they not? Yeah, yeah. they're not allowed to. No. Here, they are allowed to. Here, That's why. Oh, oh, oh! Monday was a mandatory day off. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. You're right. Here, here's what I would. Here's what I would say. The team, I think, whether they feel like he does in a sense of we got some work to do. If you haven't been already approaching this part of the year like that, then you've kind of failed. So as far as for like taking a different approach and how you go about preparing. I'm not sure that the team's saying everybody needs to be here early. We need to do that much more because it's like, well, if we need to do that now, then what the hell have we been doing yeah. up until this point? All right. So I would imagine they don't feel that, but you need a little kick in the ass a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where Jay's kind of kind of putting this one to him a little bit. Yep. Um, and I think I think they're gonna respond well. They usually do to Jay. Uh, today get through get through the game, win the game, the way you need to win the game, don't mess around, move on, get on the flight tomorrow and get to Arkansas and figure it out. I'd imagine the tarp's going to be on the field on Wednesday at Arkansas. That's usually their their technique, their their tactic. That one cloud. That's, that's, yeah, it's weird. That's, you know, Ch- northwest Chance right rain. here. I think that's the rain coming in, guys. So we can't practice. Yeah, yeah. I, you can I've use the cages, but been sure. Arkansas twice when I was out here. LSU did not get to hit on the field one time on Thursday. Played all three games, I'd imagine. Huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we put out no no right. delays. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nothing. of course. Yeah, so I didn't get to hit on the field. I'm talking about on Thursday practice before. Right. Right, like you get to like you like to feel the lights, you like to feel the field, you kind of see how it flies. Thursday, that's what Thursday's for. No, we get to that. Rain, tarp, every time. Okay. And look, it was it wasn't like it was sunny. I get give them that. It also wasn't raining. That's okay. That's what that's what Wednesday will be for this time. Yeah. No practice. No practice. You get none. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're gonna get there on Wednesday, do their thing, then they play on Thursday. Obviously, you have Hagen Smith on the mound for them on Thursday. He has been absolute. Lights out. Other than the first game of the season, he has shoved. He has done really well. He's, he's lights gonna be out a, last year too. Yep. He's gonna be a top five, top ten pick in the draft, and LSU's got their work cut out for them. Uh, Arkansas's pitching staff as a whole. Are you pulling it up right now? Oh, I thought you were looking at their roster. Um, Arkansas's pitching staff as a whole. I hate talking about Arkansas wearing this color too. Mm-hmm. It's close too. Not exactly there, but it's kind of close. Uh, this wasn't planned. Obviously. I didn't know if we wanted to go. I mean, we have, obviously, we have Southeastern if we I figured we'd look at them. Okay, let's look at them. Because you have Southeastern, like you said, 17 and 7. A couple of the guys that to look out for, I guess, on the offensive end, hitting 280 as a team, 45 doubles, four triples, 31 homers, and the pitching staff has 21 of 23 on bags. So they don't steal a ton, but they're very efficient, efficient when they do it. And pitching staff, 446. Cumulative ERA, 182 strikeouts in 204 innings, 234 opponent batting average. Obviously, it's not, not the terrible. SEC, but that's not terrible. You're playing who you're playing. Yep, and that and that's not. I mean, 4.434, whatever it is, like that's not like it as a team ERA. It's not like it's awful. You know, I mean, that's that's and, doable. And you've seen other teams do this to LSU before, especially. I mean, the one that comes to mind the most is UL whenever they play LSU. They they've, pitch everybody. Well, they've moved their Friday night guy into the oh, well, that too, into a midweek role because they see that game as being that important. I don't know if Southeastern do the same thing, but it's also something that has happened in the past. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, that didn't really work out for great for UL last year. Well, they got they swept did, out. Yeah, 
They didn't really work out. They they won the game, but they didn't. They didn't. Not, they also did not they won the weekend. conference game. Yeah, that's and the conference games to I would imagine yeah. mean more. Um, I'm with you. I don't. I'm not. I wouldn't put my money in that actually happening. But I guess I wouldn't be shocked to see it either because people have done it in the past. Uh, but I wouldn't expect it to happen. Who's the best? Who's their hitter? It's Thomas, right? They have so a couple of guys to look out for on the offensive end. Shea Thomas hitting three eight. 379, eight doubles, five homers, 22 ribs. TJ Salvacchio, 338, seven doubles, two triples, I wonder, three homers. I wonder if that guy's from uh, the, the Northeast. Country. The Northeast. Oh, yeah, South Slovakia. South Slovakia, South Slovakia. Jude Hall batting 296 with four doubles, four homers. So, two guys in the infield, one guy in the outfield to look out for. And from the pitching perspective. We don't know who's starting, right? We don't know. No, no we don't know who's starting, but I was going to go off a couple of. <clears throat> appearances here where they have Jackson Rodriguez who's thrown a ton Dalton Ashholm Lincoln Polk Aiden Vosberg and Will Kinsler all okay. have logged at least 12 or more appearances and then Brennan Stuprick and Dakota Lee fall in that category I'd imagine they're probably going to pitch a few guys too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, feel it out. Yeah. I remember we played Southeastern. They had a guy. Uh, oh, no, that wasn't Southeastern. Never mind. <laughs> they had a guy, though. They did have a guy. That was your guy, Northwestern State. He threw 97 miles an hour from the left side and struck out 12 guys in a row. I think that was your year. No. No, that was your next year. No. Did y'all lose? Yeah. Yeah. Because of that guy. He ended up pitching. I played, played against him uh, in 21 in the minor leagues. He made it to the big leagues, I think, for a little bit. Or maybe he didn't quite make it to the big leagues, but was right on the cusp, hit a homer in the minor leagues off of him, which was nice. Yeah, saved it for then. Didn't do it in college. <laughs> Struck me out. Heater. Who is All this heaters. guy? I like, well, the scouting report that we got from him was, hey, this guy's 89, 91. Yeah, that's not right. And he's sitting 97. So I was like, that was not right. You messed that one Who up. Who bailed this one yeah, in? Not good. Um, Northwestern, it's got to be 89-91. Sure, I got 12 guys in four innings. that day. Yeah. Good performance. Yeah, that was it. Dra- I got them drafted in like the third round. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I know we've said this a lot, but Southeast, I mean, these teams, these midweek teams will come in now this year they want to win. I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. Um, they're going to play their ass off. They are excited to play here. Now, they, you know, they're not as talented up top to bottom. But baseball, I think, has shown you anybody can win any given day. Yep. Yeah, and, and so who you saw last year, I mean, not last year, earlier this year, was I think Aiden Vosberg was the guy that kind of threw everybody for a loop. Four point, uh, four, four and two-thirds innings pitched, four strikeouts, only gave up one earned and one walk. So yep. he was the guy that kind of carried them and kept Southeastern in the ball game for the most part until she was able to kind of right the ship and be able to sneak out of there with a win. Now, he's, if he throws again today, I think it would be a little different. You know, you get to see him twice. You know what he's got. Um, a little more familiar with him. So, um, And, and yeah. Jackson Rodriguez was their guy going into that series before LSU. They leaned on him. He was their de facto closer. Like, every time that he had come in, he'd pretty much slam the door. So I'd imagine a bounce back a little bit if it gets close. Yep. That he'll come back in and want to pitch a little bit better. Don't be surprised if you see them try to do whatever they can to push across runs today. Just in the sense of last time they had the game pretty much won and the lead still wasn't big enough. So don't be surprised if you see them trying to scratch as many runs yep. as they can across to be able to get whatever cushion they can possibly get to bridge them to that to the end of the game, to that final out. For sure. And uh, in games like this, the most important thing is from, the, from our pitching staff is to throw strikes. Like, make these guys beat you by getting hits. Do not – Give them free passes. Do not um, hit them. Don't don't let them get on base and put pressure on you unnecessarily. And honestly, outside of maybe Bucknam, the two names that Jay mentioned, that's their biggest task. Throw Literally, strikes. throw strikes. If yeah. you throw strikes, you become a featured piece of the weekend. Right. Because your stuff's that good. Yep. So that's probably why he mentioned them because he's like, if I can get you guys to do this, you will no longer be pitching on Tuesdays. You'll be pitching on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Maybe twice of those. Yep. 100%. And he, and he said as much during his coaching show. He's like, I want these guys to be able to pitch to prove to me that if you pitch well, They're you right. will have a chance to like throw not only on the weekend, this weekend. Yeah, because you got two guys yeah. throwing 100 miles an hour with super sink yeah. on both sides, of the, both sides of the rubber. Like, you need those guys. And I, I, like, I know we talk about stuff, but these are by far 
they're both in the top five on the team when it comes to stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the, so the fact that they're pitching tonight instead of on the weekend is like, hey, if we need to bring these guys along yeah, because figures, if we can get the stuff to play in the zone, then we got something serious yeah, let's right start here. Start figuring it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because I, and the, uh, sorry, just one more note on the in the previous matchup this year, you're not going to see at least the starter who was Kate Anderson who went five innings with 13 punches. Yeah, he's pitching this weekend. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you're going to get that today. I don't think no. he's starting. But Fidel threw, Lower threw, Gidry threw, and Ackenhausen threw. So you're not going to see probably three of those five names. Uh. You're Two not, for sure. Not gonna. See, I don't. I wouldn't imagine you'd see Gidry or Ackenhausen. Oh, uh, maybe not Gidry. Yeah, probably not. No, yeah, you're right. Three of the five. You're not gonna see three of the five. I forgot you said Gidry. Um, but you have enough guys to go out there and throw it and I do it. I'd be surprised to see Gidry tonight. I'm gonna be honest with you. He threw once over the weekend, right? Mm-hmm. And he threw. It was Friday too, wasn't it? Or was it's it was Saturday. 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 Yeah. It I depends on where the situation is, right? Gidry threw in that game because it was close, mm-hmm. right? Like. Jay's shown he's gonna. You need to win every game, yeah. I, especially I think, when you're not winning them as yeah. many on the weekends right now. You gotta win every game. Yeah, I think Gedry tonight is the. I would like to not throw him exactly. tonight. Exactly. Exactly. But if I need to win the game, he's not coming out with a two run lead and two runners on in the six. Like, put him in in the end of the game to to finish the game this tonight if, if you have to. Yep. I think that's kind of where he'll be. But I think they'd be very happy to not have to throw him tonight. And even if you do throw him, it could be in a limited capacity where you've seen that, him come well, in. that's my point. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, even if it's not the end of the game, you saw him kind of come in in a limited capacity where it could be a big spot in the sixth inning. The, so the reason why I'm he, saying the yeah. reason why I'm saying not that why I would not use him for that this time is because of what happened last game, the eighth inning, they, they went into the top of the went into the top of the ninth down by how many runs? None. Three. Two. LSU. Last time he's in? Yeah. Was it two or three? Three to one. Oh, I thought you were about when he came no, in no, against no. Florida. No, I'm no, sorry. no. When LSU played Southeastern last, they went into the top of the night down by how many runs? They were down. Uh, it was. It was a two or three. It was, it was three a two or three run. Three right? to one. So my point is, is why why am I going to bring him in in the sixth when we know we can get them offensively? Mm. I don't need him in the sixth. Maybe I need him to close the game and finish it if I got a two run lead in the ninth. I don't need him in the sixth. I need him this weekend. So if I need him to close it, maybe I'll do it then. But I'm not bridging him to get me to get right. me to the end of the game this weekend. Yeah, or t- tonight. Which, which I, I mean, I agree with. I mean, I think you have enough guys to do that. You're not. He's not your get out of trouble guy tonight. He's your closer tonight. Yeah, I think that's when he, that's the only time he throws. Yeah. Hopefully we don't need him. Hopefully the game's out of hand early on, and we'll go see. Um, we don't do pick to click for midweeks. Midweeks matter. Midweeks matter. Do you want to do a pick to click? That's the only thing we don't do lines. Just pick to click for the midweek. Pick to click for the midweek. Who I would like to see, I'd like to see Milam get going again. He got it. He was his first to, homer of his career tonight. Maybe he was able to. I think he scratched across a one hit against Florida in the. Florida I'll also series. be at the game tonight, which I'm very excited about. Oh, very fun. Oh, nice. My very friends, nice. one of my friends, the assist, uh, assistant uh, coach for Southeastern, so I could support him too. Where that same? Well, that would I guess yeah, it'd be an homage to his Alabama career. Uh, funny story. So at the tailgate, I mean, I forgot to tell you this. At the tailgate, I was um, Skip pulls up in his golf cart with Mike Papa John, a couple other people. I guess Mike Papa John is doing like a documentary on him, right? Filming all this stuff. So he sees him, and I see Skip, and I go talk to him. And in the back of the the second row of the golf cart is Jim Wells. Who coached Alabama, right? Coached against um, me, us at Alabama, yep. and his assistant coach at the time was Mitch Gaspard. That's that's Taylor Duga, who's my one of my really good friends, who's the assistant coach at Southeastern. That's his Mitch Gaspard, who coached Duga at Alabama, is now his father-in-law. Mitch, Taylor married Mitch's daughter. So I go to I go to Alabama. Remember, this is when you hated me when, you, when I was supposed to commit to Alabama. Uh-huh. You told the story like you were. And so I go to Alabama yeah, that, as an hoodie. uncommitted, unsigned high school senior. I bet you didn't, I, I bet you didn't show up there in a Tar Heels jersey. I did not. <laughs> that was a bold move there. I show up after my jamboree. I go do the whole thing. I don't play on the screen, but I've told this story part of the story before. Well, I tell that story to Jim Wells 
And I was like, yeah, it's funny. You know, I, was, I came out there. He goes, oh, no, you came to a camp, a senior camp, your senior year. I said, yeah. I was like, funny story. Taylor Dugas was one of my best friends. He had already signed there, and I told him that had, if Alabama offered me, I was like, I was committing on the spot. And I was like, Gaspard didn't offer me. He goes, well, I guess we're going to have to let him go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was, pretty, that was a pretty quick quick thing in there. He was obviously joking, but yeah. you know, Mitch is a great guy. Like, you know, awesome coach, was a great guy. But it was just funny that he, you know, remembered that and then said that. So that was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Dude, so when you get those it. kind of guys together, they're always, like, it seems like they're always on 10. Like, yeah. uh, everything comes back very quickly. Yeah. Like, I'm Memories, still yeah. Still got it. No doubt. No doubt. Um, but, okay, so no pick to click for this game. Well, I gave mine, Milan. Oh, you did give yours. You got one? You're going to try to will them to happen? Will it to happen? I mean, I do. I've seen this happen before. I don't want to mush it. I don't, I've seen this happen before in a young, wet behind the ears freshman <laughs> coming out there ready for life. Give me Larson, dude. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Give me Larson tonight. Be too good to ignore. Well, you know it'd be wild if Larson doesn't start, but then comes in hitting this homer. <laughs> That'd be a wild call. Um, I'm gonna throw a wild card out there. Give me Braswell. Wow, oh, I like that. I like call. that call yeah. too. I like that call. I think, sure. just, I think he's gonna sneak one out there. Today. I thought you were gonna go Milazzo. No, nope. like we're gonna have all nope. first timers. Nope, Braswell. Um, yep. And then, obviously, I want to break down the Arkansas series, but we don't really have enough time to go break down all of it. Um, we touched on it a good bit. We touched today. on it a little bit. Look, this weekend, Thursday specifically, is going to be tough, right? It's going to be a pitcher's duel. At least you want it to be a pitcher's duel um, on LSU side. You want L you want Holman to go out there and do what he's done for every start but one. And the yeah. one start wasn't really that bad. He just yeah. didn't get a lot of help defensively. Yeah. You want him to go out there and continue to do what he's doing. He's going to have to to stay with – um, Hagen Smith, but then I want to see LSU come up with some like gritty and like just tough at bats, right? That's how you have to. You're not gonna go and say, "Oh, this guy's gonna give me a bunch of mistakes, and I'm just gonna drive him all over the ball, the ballpark." You're you not need gonna this. get him out early, right? And maybe you do, but the only way you get him out early is to grind out at bats. Yeah. Don't let him strike you out on three, four pitches. Foul off a few pitches. If it takes him seven, eight to strike you out, great, fine. Anytime you can get to seven pitches in that bat, that's great. Uh, I want to see them grind that out. I want to see them be able to force some of the, the action on him, get on the base, take the extra base on singles, and come up with some clutch two-out hits. Yeah. That's, I think that's the big thing. That's how you beat an ace. Yeah. You gotta, when, you, when you have the opportunities of guys on base, you've got to come up with the hit. There, there needs to be a, an increased level of focus, right? And you need to be able to take advantage of very, very, very small openings that you'll get. Whether that's two O counts and you not following that pitch off and you actually getting the hit, whether that's taking the extra base on a ball that barely bounces away, taking the extra base on the ball that's in the outfield, take the advantages of the small openings that you get because you're going to need every single one of them Thursday night, and you start by making sure you practice those things and you do those things tonight as well. You saw that happen a good bit against Bingham against Florida too because I don't know if he was just playing deep, but there's a couple balls that didn't really that weren't hit very hard but weren't pursued very hastily in the outfield where Florida was able to take the to take a, that would have been a single turn into a double and that's when he constantly put pressure on LSU and LSU did the same thing I would say Friday whenever they had Tommy White come around and score on a on a single to left yep. field and then I forget the second guy oh Jared Jones no it was uh Travinsky it was Travinsky that scored both of them scored back-to-back -back singles yeah. yeah and they didn't even get a throw off and it was just I think they were kind of surprised to see LSU put that pressure on early in the in the first I think I believe it was the first inning to be able to scratch across two runs and those kind of things make a difference so I'd like to see also whether it's cutting off aggressiveness from the Arkansas side or just putting the pressure on them and like don't be afraid to get thrown out at home yeah um agreed and that's putting pressure on yeah, I mean that's 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 forcing the action that's what you need to see I want I see him play a clean defensive game too yeah it's a bit odd yeah like plays that like maybe aren't considered errors, but like should have been made. You know, Bingham made that diving diving attempt. Like huge sash, I need to catch that. Right. You know, and so those or at least being able to keep those balls in front of you, not giving up the extra yeah. bases too. And yeah. Roswell had one that snuck by him that led to a rally where it's just ones that you could probably get a glove on. Yeah. That just. Yep. You need to see him do that. Milam, huge play. You, Almost you know, people, a bad play. Yeah, but people will forget about it because it didn't. 
Almost a bad play. And he said, caught it, and then I'm going to get you. Intentional walk worked. So loads of bases there. And they were going to intentionally walk Caglione, too, if he had gotten the uh, the previous batter out. But couldn't do it. I didn't do it. Um, See you. All right. See ya. The ball was mushed. Mush. Uh, we, we didn't get the, we didn't get the exit velo on that obviously because it's a, a visiting team. That's but when you unplug it. I want to know what that one was. <laughs> I wish they have them all. That's what they need to do. That's the adjustment next year. They need to put all the exit velos and launch angles on the scoreboard because they have it. Yeah. They have the pitch. Feel they have the decimal to two decimal places on the pitch. <laughs> It'd really make uh, Ackenhaus feel good. Turn around and be like, oh, one twenty off the. That, I think that would make me feel better. <laughs> Did one cheap? At least you didn't. At least you got all of it. If you're gonna hit a homer, hit one. This you know, don't the cheap the cheap jam shot homers that would piss me off more. The wind as a pitcher. blown, just yeah, that would piss me off as a pitcher. Um, all right, that's our preview for uh, our semi preview for the Arkansas game and our preview for the Southeastern game. Uh, you want to do a quick round of segments, or I mean, I have my curtain call. Let's do curtain calls. We only have to do mistake of the day today. Mistake Cur- of the day, I have. You have a mistake. Okay, mistake of the day is brought to you by our friends at Dozy Place. Yeah. String it, string that thing out. Hold on. I'm holding. I'm holding. Mistake of the day brought to you by Doe's Eat Place is, we talked about it a little bit before the show, but it was a, um, Vince Young, obviously Texas legend, was out at the bars. And can't Still blame the, the guy. Still the bars. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, he's come a long way from renting out entire Boeing 757s. Also, they're in hot water. They had three people resign today. But he used to rent out entire Boeing airplanes to go out with his friends. They would just rent out the whole plane and bring 15 people. Vince Young. That was his move. Which is why Vince Young is... Um, Not doing as hot as he used to be. Yep. All right, it's not working. Either way. It's on TMZ. He gets knocked out. He gets sucker punched at a bar. Guy absolutely wallops him. But Vince Young still all of 6'5", probably a little bit above his playing weight now. But he gets uh, – a guy was pretending to, like, hold him back and thought he was on his side. He just turns probably a 5'9 white kid and just mushes him, knocks him out. Is that what he was, 5'9"? You, yeah, just, made not, that, you just made that no, up. No, huh? I mean, I've seen the video. Yeah, it's tough. Tough. But as Jared said, if it happened these former These former quarterbacks are getting attacked right now. Good. Cam, Cam – uh, Cam Newton got attacked at his camp. Vince he, Young got not gets knocked out of the bar. Cam Newton had Cam little, Newton's went a little differently. Had a little bit better showing. Yeah, a little differently. That's tough. You got one? I'll give him my curtain call. So you can get a little time to think. There you go. My curtain call. No, that's the mistake of the day. My bad. Okay. Curtain call is brought to you by our friends at Assured Partners. Um My curtain call, and I can't find the link that I saw right before the show. But Miss Terry Saban comes out and they're asking, guess how the retirement is going for Nick? And he said, she's great. Nick Saban just opened, typed, and sent his first email. No way. Yeah, apparently people did that for him. And so my current call is like, Dan, that's awesome. You get to the point where, like, the simple task that you don't even have to do. Someone does it for you. That's how great is that? Delegation at its final. How great moment. is that? Could you imagine how frustrated he was for, like, the first <laughs> yeah. five minutes? Miss Terry! What about come help? Come do this. Yeah. Are probably, you sure this is going to the right spot? He probably still should have an assistant. I would imagine he probably still has an assistant or someone that helps him like organize things because he's still got a lot going on. Oh yeah. You know. As much oh, yeah. as he wants. Yep. You got one. I yeah. got one. I got you got one. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one. Since it's Tuesday, we won't be here on Wednesday. We don't have another show until Friday. I'm gonna tell you, happy opening day. Happy opening day for Thursday MLB. baseball. Major League Baseball yep. starts on Thursday, so. Happy opening day. You can go ahead and play this back again on uh, Thursday. when you Speaking get of opening day, Kevin Gosman favorite. Odds on favorite right now in the American League to win the Cy Young. What a guy. Go throw some, go throw some money on that. Put some money on that. Yeah. What you got? My credit call is to you, good sir. Oh, thanks, sir. I was going to save it for the end of the show, but we had to. Uh, I mean, obviously, Cat was out the bag, but congratulations. I feel like Appreciate it's a long you. time coming. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate and it. Looking forward to it. They've already done the prequel to this where you went down and got the lay of the land, I'd yeah. imagine. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah little, put the, 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 put the, put the town Kiwanis Club on, uh, <laughs> yeah. on notice. That's it, the first fish bank. <laughs> the bingo just, club on notice. Over there. Hey, y'all get ready. This is happening later down the line. Yeah, no, it's I appreciate that. you would show up. Yes. Yeah, like, hey, all right, if you congrats. show up, we'll do yeah. it. Yeah. I'm with done the enough for STM yet. Yeah, we, did have, we had somebody on Twitter, we put it out. Well deserved. And he's like, 
one of the best number eights to ever do it. Best number eight at LSU's. Where did he go to high school? <laughs> no, what, what did he? No, what number did he? Yeah, wear what number did he wear? High yeah, school? well, I guess that's. A, I mean, yeah. I guess you know, not not a for sure thing that I wore eight in high school. I did wear number eight in high school, so his number eight will be retired. Baseball, not football. Um, which hasn't. I don't need it to you be give retired. Give this man an itch. No, no, no. I don't need to retire in football. I was just clarifying that like eight is retired in the baseball world at STM. So I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm very excited. So will nobody um, be able to wear it? I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Whoever's wearing number eight this year. Right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's going to hey, go give into me that. <laughs> I don't imagine it's going to go into effect next year. Yeah, I mean, the season's almost over, so I'd hope. If they take this, this jersey off this man before the game starts, I'd feel bad. Give it right to you. Yeah, nope. You keep Snatched it on. Snatched it right you off got his it. chest. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Villain story. That would be tough. That would be a tough ticket, but he's, that's not going to happen. Sorry, no. kid. Yeah, sorry. That'd be great. You don't like it, no, play it better. Be great. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be up there one day. That's right it. next day. So you keep working hard. You never know. Number 45. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's a cool thing. I'm very honored and uh, excited for, uh, for it and excited to celebrate with my family and be able to you know be there with them. So, all right, that's all we got for today. Enjoy the game tonight. Uh, I'm sorry, and we're not going to be here on Wednesday. We'll be back live in studio on Friday from 1 to 2.30-ish. Uh, recapping the Thursday game, previewing the Friday game against Arkansas. It is Good Friday on Friday. Um, so, it's when Lent starts. That is when Lent starts, <laughs> apparently. It's when Lent ends. What? Um, but, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy, the, enjoy your Tuesday. We'll see you on Friday. Enjoy the game if you're going to be there. Um, if you see me. Come say, hey, what's up? I'll be there. I'll be roaming around. Uh, enjoy your day. We appreciate you. We love and support you. We appreciate the love and support. And we, we love, love and support, support you. you. And we love and support you. If anyone uh, you. Yeah. If you like, if you like our, our uh, show, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you, can't like, if you don't like watching us, you like listening to us, we're going to get your pod. So appreciate y'all. See you on Friday. Peace. Here it is. Oh, you found it. Where is it? Back left corner. He's in the backwards already. hat. Oh, he already got punched? No, he's in the white hat. Oh. Bam! Oh! 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 oh. oh. And then the guy stepped over him like the AI. Oh! <laughs> he AI'd him. Yeah, he did. Damn. That, and that guy, that guy? That's, that's, and he walked and out. And he took his shirt off. Yeah. If he lied. Wow. That's a tough, well, that's a sucker punch, so I, I came in. Yeah. He punched the legend and nobody even did nobody anything. Nobody did nothing. He just, just, just walked away. <laughs> That's when you know you're in the wrong spot, bro. Uh, yeah. I, Austin, that'll happen. They're not for you over there. <laughs> That's tough. Austin's supposed to get weird, right? Get happy, be happy. And I, ha I wasn't too happy. Well, yeah. that was in Houston, but. Oh, that was in Houston? Yeah, yeah. the eighth time. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that happened in Houston. <laughs> that happened That happens. legend. Houston. It's young. Yeah. Tough. All right. Love you. See ya. Bye. Peace.